Banana the Boar In a mews behind Mulberry Square was the party to which I was called. The men were all covered with hair, and the women were more or less bald. With her feet on a spongy divan, and the rest of herself on the floor, I saw what I thought was a man, but in fact was Banana the Boar. Banana the highbrow, banana the boar, with her feet on the sofa, her frame on the floor, young poets sat cross-legged and gaped in a row at the Empress of Chelsea, Princess of Soho. But I heard what I took for a delicate snore from the Queen of the Highbrows, Banana the Boar. Her clothes had come over the seas, from Russia, the Riff or the Rhine, her dress was a nighty Chinese, and her shoes of a Spanish design. She woke and she eyed me askance. She hummed an Italian air, then sighed that her soul was in France, and I wished that her body was there. Banana the Briton could never abide the land where the British are forced to reside. Her English remarks you extract with a wrench, but she constantly flings you expressions in French. For the language of Shakespeare is useful no more when it comes to the thoughts of Banana the Boar. She has published some verse in her time, which was jolly so far as it went. It lacked only rhythm and rhyme, and no one could tell what it meant. But every intelligent man is sure she could write, if she would, some verse which would not only scan, but be more or less well understood. Banana, banana, sits mum as a cat. They say she is deep, and perhaps it is that. She hasn't much use for the men of her race, but dig up a dago and watch the girl's face. She doesn't like me, as I've hinted before. And I can't say I dote on Banana the Boar. Mm -hmm.